And now, our feature presentation. And now, being recorded while being on Ambien, it's the most random show on the internet. It's TVK Live! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the only show on the internet that will cosplay as a sim. Welcome to the most welcome to TVK Live here on TVK Radio and TVKMagazine.com. My name is Richard, and joining me today is... Hi, Sharon. Hi. Except we still don't have our little pum- plumbos. Is that what they're called? I think so. There's an actual term for that? I yeah. just thought it was the little green jewel no. thing. Oh, I just don't God. know if I'm saying it right, but yeah, it has a name. I now need to look... A pul- Did you say a plumbo? Plumbo, I think. It's, I think it's P-L-U-M-B-O, I think, plumbo. We need <laughs> green thing above Sim's head. That's... It is a... Uh, oh, a plumbob. I don't think it doesn't have B at the end, does it? P L U M B O B. It's a plumb bob. Hmm. Plumb bob. Apparently, if there's a way, like you can get a star bob to appear over their head too. I the only version of the Sims I enjoyed was Sim City. I enjoyed Sims in the city. I don't. I, I've played some of the Sims where you can be a person and like you can set things on fire, and I always do because I can't cook worth a crap so, in the Sims. Right after, um, I guess it was probably about a year old. Um, I had I don't know what style of Game Boy it was. Um, it was the little ones that like folded up, the little square ones. Is that the advance? No, it might be the advance. I don't know. Um, it's not it the may, color. It may have been the Game Boy color. I don't know. I had a blue one. Anyway, um, every time like I would get so far into the game, Zeke would wipe my game. And like I got to where I could play through the game so fast. I think I probably played that game like 20 times before I got to the end. The fact um, that there was a Sims on Game Boy baffles me. Uh, it, and apparently, like I think the story was... Because it actually had a story mode. Like if the point of it was to play for the story, but not if you played it on like any other system. Yeah, because it's just to make your life. Yeah, better. but there was an actual story to this one, um, and it ended that. up with like there being like I don't know like aliens at the end or something. I yeah, was really, that's the way to be. I was really kind of disappointed when yeah. I got to the end, but my favorite thing in Sim City was to make this multi-billion-dollar city and then have a tornado hit it. It was great. Mm. Flood it, snow, everything. It's just like you get to be God to the city of people. Intermittently, I play Sims Freestyle on my phone. <laughs> you know today's Pokemon Day? Yeah. I did not know that. So uh, what's your favorite Pokemon? Uh, mm, I don't know. Um, I put a lot of time and effort into a Porygon. A what? S- Porygon. So... Back, Very, but I do not play Pokemon. Back when poor, back when Pokemon Go started, they were really rare, and I had one, and so like nobody had one, um, and so I put a lot of time and effort into it. But now, like intermittently, you can catch them. Like they'll have like special events and stuff. The only way I was to ever hatch a Pokemon is if I were to take my phone and shake it like a shake weight, so it made it look like I was walking. Because I, I'm lazy. Like, I'm not going to fucking That doesn't even fuck. work now. Like, ah, sorry. Like, it does that, on the Android. That's like the, that's the, like the end evolution of it. Oh, so it looks like a woodpecker. And that's a Porygon Z, you know? It looks like a ballooned well, woodpecker. It looks like a uh, one of those so balloon animal woodpeckers. That's the first evolution of it. And that's a block animal. Yeah, uh, they all look different. Well, yeah. I'm I'm not the biggest Pokemon fan. Fa- 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 <laughs> Pokemon fan. I, I played it. I play by favorite. That's what I'm working on right now. It's a shiny version. It looks like an. I like that. Yeah, it's a shiny version. Normally, it's blue. Okay. Yeah. To describe it at home, so so it's it's, this is. It's the second evolution of a Shinx. I've got a Luxio that's shiny. So it's um yeah it's like a gold color. I was just gonna make up a Pokemon name and just say "Eh, that's what it looks like. So it's Pokemon Day, um, but. Before too long, we're actually coming up on, um, what, the fourth year of Pokemon Go. That'll be in July. 
Yeah, because I remember Hillary Clinton yelling, hey, everyone should Pokemon go to the polls. Oh. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, so, because I figure I'll write about that because uh, we've actually, my kids and I, you my husband, have, we've been playing very consistently. You and my wife will walk everywhere playing this game, and I'm so scared you're going to end up doing the sitcom thing where you walk straight into a light post I on a street. Haven't yet. Yet is the key word. It it's going to happen. Yeah. It's probably going to be Ashley. Um, I'm super excited. and I guess it's next month. Um, my family and I, we're going to St. Louis for a day for a safari zone. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. Uh, before we get started and more into this show, because yeah. we have a lot to discuss today. It is our C2E2 preview episode. We're going to talk things we're excited about. We're going to find out how... We're going to find out a lot today, I think. Uh, we're going to answer some Q&A questions that were sent into us, tbkmagazine at gmail.com. And I've got stories about being on Ambient. But uh, before we get started on... I told you to be careful with Yeah, that. before we get started on today's show, don't forget to visit our store shop, TBK. Pick up a t-shirt from one of your favorite shows, including this one, St- uh, Striking a Chord, The Winos, and more. Pick up that at shop tbk, tbkmagazine.com slash shop tbk and tell people you're a member of the cult of random. Also, don't forget to visit randomevolvemedia.com and pick up an autographed copy of Invincible Heart by Brian Tan and Kendra Souter. Or you can pick it up on Amazon in ebook or in the print form without the autograph. And all book retailers, I believe, still haven't figured out if we need to have them everywhere yet, but I clicked the button to put them everywhere. So you nah, should check know. that. I did on the other day and it didn't show up, but it says it could take up to like three weeks for it to show up. And I went, this fucking sucks at times. I uh, want to thank you guys for making the Nazi Awards our most downloaded episode of the year, which is kind of funny for me to say. But uh, and, and I meant from Nazi Awards from last year to this year, not 2020, because <laughs> it is. But uh, thank you guys for taking the time to listen to that. Um uh, it's our C2E2 preview episode this weekend. We're going to be in Chicago. Our plans have kind of went awry because that's how it normally goes in life because life decides to throw you some fucking curveballs all the time. We've had well laid plans for about five or six months. And, and, then, and then my wife had surgery and, well, everything went to hell. So, uh, but hey, the surgery was worth it. So, yes, well, we want, <laughs> we want her to be healthy. Uh, I have other statements to make. I will not say them on this show because her grandmother's probably listening, but... <laughs> I can probably fill it in. Yeah, no, I just... It, it's not appropriate for me to say, but... I just go... Oh my God, I didn't put this on the list, but I got to tell you about this new show I've discovered. I texted you while watching it. I don't remember. Yeah, okay, so last weekend, I I have sh- stuff on our DVR. Oh, yes, I do remember. Yeah. So I have I, I decided to record a show one day out of the clear blue because I'm like, I need something to watch just to put on the background that's going to make me laugh. Like right now, I need comedy in my life. There's a lot of reasons why. Uh, actually, a Q&A question's about this later. So hey, not the show, but about why we... Yeah, all right. But I discovered this show called Extreme Love on Women's Entertainment. <laughs> Don't judge me. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but the show is about these awkward couples... And my God, couples, couples, appropriate? no, it is because it's like a, a daddy and his adult baby and <laughs> like he took her out. They're from Tennessee. I They're think like I two told hours. You like one time I was looking on Amazon for jumpers. Yeah, that and is. I accidentally found like adult like onesies. Yes. The ABDL lifestyle. The OK, so he takes her out. To um, they're like two hours away from us, by the way. Well, you know. Yeah, I mean, but he takes her out to a bookstore, and the lady, the the lady who owns the bookstore, goes, "I was just happy to have customers today." <laughs> nice. I'm like, that's awesome because she's being herself in the bookstore. I mean, it's not hurting anybody. It's yeah. just, it's just weird sometimes. But my favorite couple is this neuroscientist, like. This teaches, huh? Yeah. And this hardcore metal rocker guy who will not have kids because they have a collection of porcelain dolls they take everywhere. They have 50 of them and they treat them like family. They don't take all 50 
at the same time. They, do they? take most of them. Yeah, like, they they, they like that split seems a, like a lot of work. It does. They like have strollers for all of them, and ev- I'm telling you, this is the greatest show in television. I thought Sex Sent Me to the ER was great, and I was like, that that show is fun. But this show a hundred times better than Sex Sent Me to the ER. There, there's a house in Colorado that is just devoted to kittens. You do, you do realize that this 100% makes you a voyeur. I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) I've watched, uh, I've watched some weird shit. But there's a kitten house, like all these girls who are kittens, and they live in this house, and there's a magazine devoted to it, and. I was like, and they have these huge parties, and like one kitten was jealous that the main cat was dating all the other girls, and I'm like, like this is so much fun to watch. <laughs> like I, I love learning about other people. I love documentaries. I think I've said that mm-hmm. numerous times. I love the idea, but watching this show probably made me the happiest television viewer in the world. There was a lot, guy who was uh, who had a car. And he talked about each car he had sex with. Mm-hmm. I'm like, kudos to you, sir. I don't think I could stick my dick in a tailpipe, but whatever. His his uh, car of choice is a 1960s Volkswagen Beetle named Pearl. Okay. <laughs> Just white. And then uh, there was a woman who... The story is really sweet, but she loves... like. Her her love her and romantic love is a airplane. It's a Boeing seven thirty seven or seven twenty seven. It, it's an airplane, and the guy who run the airport that she went to see this plane at that she's kissing all over, like she's kissing on this giant commercial airliner, which just great. But he told her he's like, "Hey, I'll send you some replacement parts." She started crying, and I'm like, <laughs> "It's so sweet," but I'm like. This is so crazy. <laughs> I I don't like I don't want to be mad because like I don't want to make fun of you because it's so sweet. Like I don't know how to put it. <laughs> but she in that airplane, like he did, he kept sending her parts. Like she has almost half an airplane in her apartment <laughs> now. And I'm like, cool with you. That's that's an awesome lifestyle to have. But they set it up to where she could have two hours of this plane by herself. And the guys are like, hey, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> <clears throat> Some very understanding people there. You know what? Everybody that these like everybody in this show who came around these couples were the most understanding people in the world. I don't know if it's just because most of the stories took place in like there was there was one in Arkansas and there was one in Tennessee. The Tennessee was the adult baby and there was a polyamorous couple in ten- Arkansas. I'm like, yeah, polyamorous couples are a thing now. They're becoming more popular. Yep. I think that's going to become the norm in like 10 years because I don't think traditional marriage is going to be like the thing. Uh, wow. I can't believe I said that on a show, <laughs> but believe that. So I but, think it'll actually keep more people together. Oh, do you know the statistic behind swingers marriages? Like nine, I think it's around 80 to 90% of swingers don't get divorced. No, yeah. that's an insane amount compared to just, Knowing that the divorce rate or the yeah, marriage success rate is like 40. stay together. Yeah, yeah, because there's more trust. It I can't believe we are having this conversation. <laughs> but there's more trust in the relationship. You've got to be more open in those relationships. Yeah, they're hard work. Yeah, it's gonna take a little bit more to make it actually work, but in the long run, you're gonna be a if it makes you happier, you're a hundred times happier. But yeah, that... But there was one where there was a swinger couple who wanted to meet, like, wanted to show this new couple the ropes. This was the most, like, she looked like she was having a blast. That dude was about as entertaining as a stick. <laughs> like, he had absolutely no person. The perso- new guy or the? The new guy. Yeah. No personality at all. This other couple, like, the wife is, like, yelling and saying sexual things while in a Mexican restaurant while drinking a margarita. Like, come on. Let's all do this together. <laughs> Woo! And I'm sitting there going, I don't think I could handle you. But... So they throw this swingers party. They invite them. She's just running around the the wife of the older couple, like the the I don't know how to, how to, what the term is, but 
the wife that's trying to more get this out. Of, yeah, the more experienced wife is just running around this party <laughs> naked. She's trying to have uh, sex with a porn star that's there. Like, she's trying to have sex. They end up going home with, like, a completely different couple. The one girl's like, I could have fun. I had a little bit of fun. I put a guy in my corset. It was okay. <laughs> Stick guy's like, yeah. That's it. That's all he has to <laughs> What kind of personality do you have? And now they're teaching couples about swinging. And I'm like, what the hell are Maybe you Maybe he just doesn't like being on TV. I thought that. I did think or that. he's but. just not comfortable with the tension on it. Like, how can... They this okay. So the lady who was throwing this party actually had it set up to where they had like multiple beds and bedrooms, mm-hmm. and they had they pulled they were able to have curtains go around them. And I'm like, that's genius for those type of parties. Kudos to you because no one would have I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, they had like a fondle me bed. <laughs> <laughs> like you just get there and you just wait for people to show up. Yeah. Well, okay. So the, it's a bunk bed. But you could lay on the top, but there was a spot cut out for your boobs and like your your uh, bottom half. That's weird. Yeah, and the people on bottom could fondle you. Like this is the coolest thing <laughs> I've ever seen. That's weird. And yeah, so I watched there's 16 episodes. I binged all 16 of those episodes with the wife over the weekend. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> And it was the greatest, like, we watched, like, four on Friday, and then we watched the rest of them on Saturday. But there was a few stories that are so sweet, like, there's a couple, like, there was a trans woman get married, and how she was never accepted, and she found someone who was, like, a former gangbanger, and he goes, I fucking never would have dated men, and now he's, like, the happiest guy in the world, and it's the greatest story you've ever seen. It's just, like, they're love, you could see they're in love, and you're like, I just got <laughs> so like all the whole time I'm like certain stories would make me cry some would make me laugh but I go oh my god because it's someone realizing that it's the person yeah it's like, the person and not the body yeah and and like the first one we watched had an adult baby in it and that dude you can tell was like this ain't for me <laughs> this ain't for me like like she like she has a normal adult life and everything, but she just comes home and just babies yep. it up. And <laughs> he's just like, you can tell. Like he put her in the corner and he went out and smoked like half a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> like it's great. <laughs> they are no longer together. Well, they actually do follow ups on all the stories. That made me happy because I'm like, I get to see what's going on. Thank you. Like I want to know what's still going on with these couples now. Uh, one of them was cousins in uh, Utah that wanted to first cousins that wanted to change the law that first cousins could get married in the state. Nice. They have a Facebook page. Uh, I did follow the doll couple on Instagram <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, I want to talk to you. Legit, you are a scientist. <laughs> this is cool as shit. Like, ah. So that was my weekend. <laughs> All day Friday, all night Friday, all day Saturday until like nine o'clock. And now I'm like, well, what do I do now? Well, if you ever get bored, you can go on Amazon and look at the adult onesies. And you can see um, re- reviews and photos of people in their adult onesies. It was a rabbit hole that I did not mean to go down. <laughs> Well, why not? Uh, well, just I was looking for, you know, a, a nice, um, um, elegant romper. And um, I love the fact that you're like, I went from romper <laughs> to this. Yeah, <laughs> it just wasn't where I expected to go. But I, I did not turn back once I went down there. <laughs> I was like, OK, let's see where this takes me. There is a Sailor Moon, one of those I have. Yeah, I keep yeah, there pop was up. there was a bunch. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I just actually saw one that says "I heart daddy." Yeah, so I'm, I mean, I'm it, sure I looked at that one. T- I, I, I have been vocally clear about things on these shows before, but like I, I love sex. I love these type of shows because one, it's like the weird part of people, but then it's like I also understand the weird part of people a lot more than I probably should. Well, you know, of course, working in women's health, like, people tell me things. <laughs> and they always start off with, you've probably never heard anything like this before, but. And I'm like, 
you might as well tell me. Someone's probably told me before. If not, they're going to tell me again in the future. So go ahead. And so, I mean, I just hear things and file it away. So, I mean, it's not like I'm ever surprised by any of this stuff. And when I do see something that's different, it's, it's just curiosity. I'm like, like you okay, know about- let's just go ahead. So I'm like prepared for when someone does tell me about it, you know? Well, I might as well ask the question. I'm not going to ask what they told you, but did you ever Google anything afterwards? Um, I really have not found any, like a patient's never really told me anything that was like so surprising that like I was just terribly caught off guard. Yeah. They, they really have not. Well, that's a plus. Oh, this one dude took his sex dolls everywhere, including a doctor's appointment. That would probably be worrisome. I was like, I, and he was complaining about uh, back issues. And I'm like, it's because you're picking up 75 pounds every time. Like, they're not for sex. They're just to pick Companionship. up. Companionship. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But he's married. Yeah. Like he has, a, I think he had six dolls, and then he also has the doll from Lars and the Real Girl, one of the actual dolls from the movie. So I'm like, I guess if you have sex with it, you're having sex with the celebrity. I have, so I have had to get better at telling people to get rid of their bedroom accessories when they have <laughs> diagnosis of STDs. Because I'm like, why do you keep coming up positive? And then I'm like, wait a second. Oh, you gotta. What are you? What are you? What are you doing? Kids, uh, kids. I probably anybody out there who has sex toys, make sure they're properly cleaned. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's not something I thought I'd ever talk about <laughs> on live. But hey, because um, because some of the nurses are like, "Why are you talking to patients about this?" And I'm like, "Cause their their STDs won't go away. There has to be a reason this is happening, and it's probably the butt plug. Someone's got to be an adult and talk to him about it." <laughs> oh my god, how was your weekend? Uh, it was, oh, I was sick. That's right. I was sick. I legit. So we got new couches. Um, we got rid of our, um, old broken down sectional. We bought two leather couches and they're identical. They, they wouldn't, they were like, why won't you buy a love seat and, um, a couch? And I'm like, because the stupid love seat is the same size. It just has a console in the middle for cups. And that means, Like, it takes up the same space. Only two people can sit there. Like, I don't want to do that. Just give me two sofas. I like the chair idea in theory like that. In theory. I I don't... Like, if it's going to be the same size, let me have three people sit there, not two. So, we got um, two sofas, and both ends recline. The middle section doesn't. And I legit just didn't move, like, all weekend. I even slept there. Damn. Yeah. Um, I didn't text you except for to talk about the sex show. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't. Um, the the boys um, started watching the IT crowd. Good choice. Um, so like they just sat there with me and watched TV. And then when I would fall asleep, they would leave and they would turn off the TV and I would wake up and I'd be like, you guys didn't have to go anywhere. And they're like, oh, we were afraid to bother you. And I was like. No, like I fell asleep with the TV on. We, like it wasn't going to wake We couldn't up. hear what Maurice was saying over your snoring, Yeah, Mom. thank you. That's nice. Um, but yeah, they, they're really enjoying that show. It's a great show. So, yeah. But that's what I did. I slept. Yeah, I forgot you were sick this mm-hmm. weekend. Yeah, I still have a little bit of a sore throat, but it's not as Jesus bad. Jesus woman. <laughs> it's not as bad. I, was gonna... I, don't, I don't think it's, you know, anything too terrible. Oh, so over or under three hundred or five over or under five hundred masks this weekend, and I don't mean cosplay mask. I mean like medical mask. Hmm. That's my bet for the C two E two. I say under. I'm going like two thousand. I think we're gonna see them on everybody, because uh, apparently Walmart's running out of mask. I could have grabbed some from work if you wanted it, but oh, I didn't think cool. of any. I want a bejeweled mm-hmm. one. Well, we could have made you one. Yeah, I saw Shane Dawson get one in a video. I was like, I kind of want one of those now for this, like if this happens. But uh, so I got prescribed a new medicine to sleep. And if anybody who knows me knows, I don't ever sleep. And I went three days without taking it this week. I was up all night. I'm like, oh, crap. Did you break it in half like I told you? Yeah, and I still, it didn't. Did help? No. So I'm like, I'm going to have to have the full pill. I'm like, oh, crap. So no, I think it was the other medicine that was causing the sleep because now i'm kind of wiry again so that's fun uh it either could be that or the coffee i don't know right <laughs> but uh i got prescribed ambien and all of my friends have told me including you yeah 
have told morning. me that there is uh you do some weird shit on Ambien. And the first night or second night I was on Ambien, I was like, I'll take the Ambien and I'll watch one of my favorite YouTubers. Cause I was like, I'm fine. I can stay up like 20 minutes after taking it. Not a big deal. Next thing I know, I'm going to bed. And I, I remember going to the bedroom. And I remember hearing Ashley go, Oh my fucking God. <laughs> because all she could smell on me is peanut butter. <laughs> so... She gets me, she turns on her flashlight, looks at me, gets me out of bed. I cannot function. Like I, you know, when you dead weight yourself and you're like, I don't want to go anywhere when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. if you did, I was doing that as an adult. I had to be washed off like a child. I guess apparently I was having my own adult baby moment. <laughs> but... So I just, I guess I made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in my ambient state and decided to eat it without my hands like a puppy because that's the only way that this makes sense. Because I had jelly all over my face, jelly and peanut butter all over my face down to like right below my nips. Like, how do you get that there? My hands were fine. Did you roll in it? Apparently. Like, my hands weren't sticky at all. So I'm like, I had to evade it without my hands. Like I had did you to just like, dog into it face first. Did you like put the butter knife in your mouth and make the sandwich? Like I, you were gonna be like hands free. And like <laughs> probably just sitting there like I got this, <laughs> and just shaking it. Uh, I don't know. Like apparently, <laughs> a Ashley said she couldn't find a butter knife, but there was like three spoons laying on the floor, and I went, "Oh my god!" So I guess I made a sandwich with a spoon. Yeah. That can't be easy. Yeah, so, so um, I told you that a friend of mine, he, his wife forbid him from taking it anymore because she would get up and there was like empty bottles of Mike's Hard Lemonade and Smarty wrappers like all yes. over the house. And she was like, you've got to stop this. She was like, I don't know when you're drinking these. She was like, but you're like getting up and going to work and apparently you're drinking in the middle of the night. She was like, you've got to stop and you're leaving trash everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I learned a very valuable lesson. So that was an experience of getting well, like just washcloth by my wife like <laughs> I was four. Uh, needless to say, I don't watch YouTube anymore while taking Ambien, but I still try to talk in my sleep. So, so that stuff's fine. It is what it is. But I'm sleeping, so I guess that's a plus. Like I'm getting eight to ten hours a night now, which is probably way more than I should. But. And you're putting up your device, so yeah. like that's good at least. You're not sending I came very close one night of sending um I want it because I was still drafted. So I went, Oh, thank the Lord of sending uh I love you, let's do butt stuff to somebody. And it <laughs> was it your wife because this no. is where you should have said yes. <laughs> no, no, no. And it, it's it is a fellow staffer, <laughs> and I can't look him in the eye. So <laughs> I was like, thank God I didn't send that. But are we going to see? Yeah, no, it's it? Brody. <laughs> like, it's, it's Brody, but. Like I was, I was like, oh, thank God I didn't send that. I haven't sent any ambient text outside that I drafted that one, and I drafted a Facebook status. Yeah, yeah, that says uh, this is Sparta, <laughs> or call me Spartacus, or something to that extent. <laughs> like, all right, whatever. Yeah, ambient is just like determined to make you really stupid. <laughs> That's what I need to do a show is just pop one of those one day and just see what happens. Like, let's, you know. <laughs> and, but I'm telling you, like, it's, it's very tricky because it's like when you're taking the amp, like when you, you are using Ambien, you feel fine. And then, like, you feel like, I got this. It's tequila. I'm sober. I'm completely in control. And then, and then you wake up in the morning <laughs> and you're like, what really happened? Like you have like a foggy memory. 
why am I dressed like Winnie the Pooh? Yeah, you <laughs> just have like this super foggy memory and you're like, did I Amazon shop last night? I have hmm. not. I have not done that, but that I know of. Well, uh, if a bunch of packages show up. <laughs> they've been showing up, but it wasn't because I ordered them. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> I got our first PR package in the mail. Yeah. And I would, I didn't know what it was. And we had to go have <clears throat> National Pancake Day dinner with her family. And I was so mad I hadn't got to open the package yet. I was like, oh, my God. And then I got to open it. And, yeah, that was awesome. I'll save it for later. Uh, I can't talk about it until we review it. But I'll show you later. <laughs> uh, it is coming with us to Chicago, though. Nice. Uh, but yeah, that that was a uh, yeah. Ambient's great because like one minute you really do feel like one minute yeah, you're you feel great, like you're fine, and then the next minute you wake up with your hand in some peanut butter. Like yeah. it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that stuff's dangerous, but it is what it is. Well, I did. I I built a tolerance to it. It didn't do anything. So. I feel I'm going to end up getting there, and that scares me, but yeah. I'm sleeping really, really well right now, and I'm going, uh, I don't know if I care. Yeah, I said something to Jesse about it the other day about how it doesn't like have any effect on me anymore. He was like, oh, really? Like, I think he was disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you shouldn't take more than one. Fuck. Well, I still only take one. Well, I know some people, somebody told me they took three one time, and they I'm like, should what not. the hell are you they doing should not. In fact, the dose for uh, women is actually recommended to only be five milligrams, which is half the Yeah, the it's, pill, it's a 10 because, milligram pill. Because um, most women, apparently, metabolize medicine differently, but most women metabolize medicine slower. Um, and so when they wake up, it's still in their system. And so they get up, they go drive, and you oh, know, it, they that, function, and... Um, they feel conscious, but um, it slows down their reaction time and they're more likely to get into accidents and things like that. So the recommended dose for women is actually five milligrams. Talked about this last week. I feel like I'm high 90% of the time. I don't know if it's because of the ambient or if it's because of the other pill I'm taking. Like, I don't know which one it is, but I'm like... It could be combination. Like, I feel decently well. Like, I feel like I could conquer the world 34% of the time, so... <laughs> which is a very odd number. Uh, is, it, is it up from what it was? Like four? Yeah. 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 So, so it's up 30%. We're winning. Hey. Uh, we did this last time. We did this before a convention a long, long time ago in a galaxy not far away. Uh, 2018, we answered some questions. Yeah, it was 2018. I was trying to remember what year it was. It was right before we went to Chicago, too. So that's kind of funny. Uh, we are going to answer some of your questions. Uh, first question is, will you guys do more interviews? With whom? Just anybody. We we get quite we got a lot of requests to do more <clears throat> interviews. I like doing interviews, but I hate asking people for interviews. I hope that we get to. Does that make any sense? Yeah. <sighs> like, you feel like you're you're a bother. Yeah, I, it's not the rejection because I'm like I got rejected enough in high school. I'm cool with it. I hope so. Um, I mean, there's someone that both of us would like to interview. Uh, a group. Oh. A little family group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who got talked about on one of our other shows this week. Uh, I, I, I like them a lot. Um, in in a in, love-hate situation. Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I think Zeke hates them even more now. He didn't know he, he, didn't know he disliked them before, but now he hates them. Um, hashtag walk skeptical. Yeah. <laughs> um, if any of you hashtag that, I swear to God. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I, I think um, I think both of us enjoy meeting new people, and um, I'd rather do face to face interviews than Skype. Yeah, I learned that last year with doing uh, uh, Camilla Dorico at Kansas City because I'm like, okay, so you get to at least feed off the person's facial expressions, and you can have a fun conversation. It was kind of weird. I'll never do another convention floor interview. That fucking sucked. <laughs> but like, I love talking to her. But like having the noise in the background, I'm like, yeah, I can't do that again. But outside that, I hate doing Skype interviews because I feel weird. I absolutely feel weird. It's like doing a face-to-face show like us doing a show is so much easier than me doing a Skype show. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just because you're the person's here. We might add video eventually so I can see the person, but... I mean, nobody wants to see my fat fucking face. So, I mean, it is what it is. Like, we talked about video for a while. Right. Doing video, like putting a video feed in there. I 
the thing with interviews for me is I do hate asking people for it. Like I got, you know, like if they seek you out, that's one thing. But if you ask them, it's just, it feels awkward. <laughs> Like, hey, you want to do an interview? I think maybe when we get to the point where we can expand our space. Um, yeah. And um, dedicate m- more time. Not that we're not dedicating more time, but um, to where maybe I can dedicate more time full time. Um, you know, again, it, it's a constant progress and we're moving more into the direction that we want to go. But we're not there yet. So maybe when we get to that point, point we can uh do it a little bit better there's got sent a news story of a girl who did makeup brushes for uh parkinson's that's great patients like that's really cool yeah uh yeah no the interview process is weird like i i would but I if there's kinda... anybody out there who's, oh, yeah, who's like hey i would like to do an interview and you know they have something to promote to discuss to unless you want to come on here and just do center <laughs> crap with us and i'm fine with that too because fuck that show's <laughs> easy to record uh but there's just i also hate going through the what got you into this conversation like i i try to come up with questions that are not the same question that every like the the artist or whoever we're interviewing is going to hear every time yeah and that becomes really hard at times because especially when you don't know the person. Right. Like last year when I did the interview with Billy, I had no idea about Billy uh, Dixon. He's a pro wrestler and I, I had no idea. And I did research and we started talking, but I got to know him. And then I was like, oh, I can take this one question and base my entire interview off that one. And that's what I did. Yeah. Occasionally you'll get someone lucky, but it's rare. But like you, I hate asking like, what got you into like? Say we're talking to a comic book artist. What got you into comics? Who's your inspiration? Those questions get old. It's easier when you have someone that's um, more willing to converse. Oh God! As, it's just having like as a two word answer to, to someone who really literally wants you to sit there and do questions coach, and answers, like coach you through the interview, like right? Like do you, do you like bugs? Okay. Um. <laughs> like, if you're not going to expand upon your answers, it, it makes things really difficult. Yeah. Interviews, I, I think they do well. Like, if you're a listener at home and you're listening to it, that's great. They're going to get a little bit more play than most shows do sometimes. But they are difficult in doing. And that's one reason why we don't have as many as I once thought we were. And I'm like, at one point, I was like, we're just going to turn one of these shows into nothing but interviews. And I went away from that idea because I went... That's a lot of just planning because you have to work around everyone else's schedule because my schedule is the easiest schedule in the world to work with because <laughs> I'm like, what time do you want to record? Just give me a time and I will be ready to go. And Manda lately is like nine o'clock at night, All right. <laughs> which is probably the best time for me to record, by the way. But, <laughs> but outside that, it's like, you might have to do an interview at like 6 30 in the morning and like no no and i've had to do that one of those and those suck or you have to do an interview with a musician after being at a convention setting it up for nine hours Mm -hmm. and wanting just to punch a wall at the end of the day like that that happens so uh, there'll be more interviews i just don't know how many more we just can't predict when or where or or how or (laughs) I mean, we got reached out to by a few people in conventions, and that always makes me happy. And, like, some of those might happen. I just don't know if they'll happen on the convention floor. Because <laughs> that that editing process sucked. There's a show we recorded at uh, StarCast in Chicago where you can actually hear the kitchen, which we're nowhere near where the kitchen was in the hotel, but you can hear the plates in the kitchen. Ding! Well, if it makes you feel any better, I've been listening to a podcast that is done in Australia, and I can hear, like, kookaburros in the background. Yes! <laughs> I love kookaburros. And they don't even try to, like, audit it or edit it out. Audit. They're just, yeah, no, they're just, they're just like, uh, sorry about the kookaburros. And I'm like, okay, they're just really loud. <laughs> uh, someone had you a question since your dream job is possibly being in a bookstore smelling coffee mm-hmm. all day. Yeah. Favorite books to read. 
it changes. Well, I say genre. I'm not going to say like a favorite book. Oh, okay. Because I'm like, I'm not going to go out of my way and tell everyone my favorite oh. book is fucking Yeah, I was going to say, it changes. It's too hard. Uh, sci-fi fantasy. They kind of overlap. So definitely sci-fi fantasy. I think uh, humor. Like I, I, I don't know. Like I just read whatever. Somebody will put something in front of I really, me. I, I really don't like political thrillers or I like love that. those I American don't. history fiction style but I love Dan mm-hmm. Brown I freaking love the Da Vinci Code you give me a hundred style like a hundred different I've actually sides read that, that one and read the sequel so I don't mind that one like, but I love books where it's like realistic fiction like I'm all like you give me that and I'll read now it. I do love science fiction when there's like legit science in it I think that's a dig at something, but I'm not going to say what it is. No, like a lot of science fiction, and it's fine if there's not, because again, like a lot of fantasy and sci-fi crossover, and that's fine. But like if you can back up your science fiction with like some real science and you've researched it, that's pretty cool. And sometimes that works, and sometimes it does not. No. Sometimes you put too much science in it, and it just, like... It becomes boring. It, it gets to where I'm, like, reading a textbook, and I'm like, mm-mm. I, science was one of my least favorite subjects in school. I know. It was fun, one of my favorite. But, like, there are just times where... Science and literature was my favorite. Yeah. Um, I, there are times when a sci-fi book has just too much. I'm, like, to, also, I hate when you get overly descriptive. I know this is dumb because you have to be more descriptive in books, but when you're Nathaniel Hawthorne describing a rosebush descriptive, you need to stop. As an adult, I have a better appreciation for Nathaniel Hawthorne. Still hate him. Think he... He's an anti-transcendentalist, and I actually, like I said, as an adult, I have a better appreciation for anti-transcendentalists. I like The Crucible more than I do The Scarlet Letter. I like The Scarlet Letter. But that's because we were forced to read it in high school, and that book turned me away from almost reading for a, at least a year. Like that book pissed me off. We used to, my best friend and I used to sell the uh, uh, summaries of each chapter to students who wouldn't read, and made about seven hundred dollars that year. So hey, <laughs> yeah. Um, friends of mine had um, an English class right after mine. Like we were, we had the same teacher, so I had. English class we had lunch together and they had English right afterwards and so I would always tell them like what was on the test what answers there were <laughs> like because they struggled and I mean I, I did not so I'm like hey guys this is what's coming up get ready at least you didn't give them the test no I did not I know some I student, there are some people out there who would give tests to later <laughs> hours at my school like, no. we never did that no, but I we did, did sell the summary of the chapters until the teacher found out we were selling them we would just print them off the internet. And, and I didn't like, sell anything. I mean, if you can make money, if you can have a side hustle going in high school, I mean... No, they were my friends. Well, these people were our friends, too. We yeah. still were side hustling them. I just knew they struggled a little bit more. These are also the same people I took money from in a poker game while sitting under a picture of Jesus. I don't know that why that would dissuade you, so... I don't know. I'm a terrible person. Uh, <laughs> What made you guys want to start doing podcast? Uh, I think that's more directed towards me. I had a background in radio. I just wanted to do them. You just drug me into it. Yeah, so. no, you kind of got thrown to the wolves. <laughs> like I did my first podcast in my pajamas with wet hair. Is that true? Yeah. The episode of when we were in Dallas. The- Oh, that's right. I forgot that, that was, was the first, the first episode. <laughs> yeah, so we came back from a convention and uh, had taken a shower and was in my pajamas and walked down to y'all's hotel room. We were room. all tipsy. And I don't think I was. I thought we all had drinks at Medieval Times that no, I think night. I probably had one. Okay, I was drunk. <laughs> yeah, I was not. I was. And I'm you're all- like, are you ready for this? And I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. Yeah, no, trying to, we had three people sharing two microphones. That No, were you guys all sharing one microphone? I don't, I have I, no idea. It was a weird time. I don't remember. That show sounds like ass now, by the way. I went back, and, like a lot of those early shows, it just sounds like, hey guys, welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. I know you said that one of us uh, couldn't speak into the microphone properly, and I think I know which one that was. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I also got some weird emails after yes, that. Yes. Those I've, emails have died down a lot. I, they, I remember you saying that someone was receiving comments. Yeah, they could. Uh, what was it? I c- was it? I think I could do. I could make love to your voice. But yeah, I, I was going to say I some something about someone's sexy voice. Yeah, I could yeah. make love to your sexy <laughs> voice or something. And I'm like, I knew we were. But again, you didn't say which of the three of us it was. So I mean, I, I can tell you just, which one of you it isn't. So, well, I figured it was not the one that couldn't speak into the microphone. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> we have a winner. Uh, I forgot that was your first show because I was like, yeah, no, you that weren't was in your first pajama. One. I was. Oh, yeah, I forgot mm-hmm. about that. Yeah. I for- I walked around that hotel a lot in my pajamas, apparently. I forgot that about that. Ho- okay, so that first that, trip to Dallas. That was I- a really nice hotel. Uh, we have a... You gotta admit, I've done decent about picking. Yeah, that was a really nice hotel. <laughs> With the exception of our Kansas City hotel, it's kind of gone downhill in the it's last couple fun. of years. But like, I it that's has something. A closet, huh? It has a big closet <laughs> with crayon in it. <laughs> ours had crayon drawings. In no, it. Ours has not in any of the rooms we uh, stayed in. Yeah, because you guys stay in the actual just bedroom, not yeah. suite rooms. We so for the first time ever on this trip, we are sharing a suite. I don't. Mm. This should be interesting. Because we're staying like 20 miles away. you don't away. even know if we're going to have our own bathrooms. Yes, we do. We do? We do. Okay. I did. I went to their say, website. Otherwise, all of us are going to be fine for a bathroom. At least I'm not doing makeup. And I don't, um, none of us are cosplaying, so. I just meant in general, I'm not doing makeup because that could take like an hour or so. But yeah, that, no, we, we've never shared a room. Yeah. Me and you have never shared. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not true. We did on my bachelor party. <laughs> No, well, not really, no. No, because you were out. Um, yeah, I did fall asleep. <laughs> but no, I had my own room. I forgot that you were with um, Jess and I yeah. was with Zach. And, yeah, because yeah. we... So we've yeah. never shared a room, but Mm-mm. Ashley will be there. So just... I did fall asleep in, in your bed for a while, but then... I was the only one awake. And, yeah. <laughs> I was the only one awake at my bachelor party. Everyone else was passed out. And I'm like, I guess I'm just going to watch episodes of Scrubs. Scrubs. Yeah. Which I think is the last time I watched that show. No, we... The boys and I have also restarted watching that. Zeke doesn't like it. Boo. I'm like, oh, Zeke, you're not allowed to say such things. Boo runs. Boo runs. Uh, there was uh, one of the things about doing the shows. I did say in our last episode there was going to be a sports show. The buzz is going to return. We're going to do more like hardcore esque topics on the buzz. I really thought about recording one this week and I didn't because I wanted to go off after uh, last week's political uh, Democrat presidential debate but i'm saving it so that'll be soon i hope and i think we're doing it after c2e2 because i've had a lot of prepping to do because of the book release and going to now and i'm like i don't have any free time i found out oddly that my kids have very strong political opinions which i don't really talk about politics in my house um and one of them differs from mine oh wow yeah did they, did, did they have to be kicked out? Like, <laughs> uh, well, I made him start watching John Oliver. Because <laughs> I feel John Oliver looks at it like things pretty equally. John Oliver. In a like, very, like, pretty honest way. His episode <clears throat> is it his last, not this last one, but the one before. And I can't think what the topic was off the top of my head, but I think it was Medicare for all was so good. And I think to like win him over, I made him go back and watch the one about the weather channel. <laughs> Out of all the ones to watch, because one of my children, one of my children, feels very strongly about the Weather Channel. So, um, like, anyway, is it like the greatest television network ever? Or? Well, as a child, it was his favorite channel. I was mine too. Like I as a very say. small child. So anyway, afterwards he was like, "Oh, so this guy doesn't just talk about politics?" And I'm like, "Well, it ties in." But no, actually, he doesn't. He doesn't no, it's, just talk about politics There's at all. some weeks he talks about science. There's some weeks he talks about yeah. the internet. Yeah. No, I really like John Oliver because I really do feel that he looks at things that as it is. The, um, I still think the best one's the net neutrality one. I, uh, I, I, that one's really I really good. like that one. I really like um, the, the smoking one. Um, Stupid Watergate always cracks yeah. me up. Uh, I like the one where he talks about the guy that just sues everyone. Oh God, that one was funny. <laughs> that yeah, one was yeah. funny, um, and he got sued. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I really like that. Um, but yeah, I love John Oliver because I feel like he, like again, he's one of the few that is just like really very. Well, it's like we get like back in what 
2004, most people got their news from The Daily Show. Yeah. Because Jon Stewart was such a great way, like his delivery. Like I, I like Trevor Noah. Don't like him as much as I like Jon Stewart. Yeah. But uh, Jon Stewart's delivery was so good. Yeah. And, like especially like when you do a political story and there's Jon Stewart like hitting it. Like, I mean, I think the first presidential candidate ever, like that was not on like a late night talk show, went on that show. Yeah. I think it was Obama. Yeah, I think it was too. So, I mean, yeah. that's that that well, helped him. And the thing is, um, one of the things that John Oliver is really good about is showing what media is distracting you from. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, because there's a lot of things that are happening that we don't always see because uh, media is controlling the news. And there's things that's going on. And so John Oliver's pretty good about bringing attention to things that are happening that we don't notice. So um, I think that's that's a pretty pretty good thing. Did a paper in college <clears throat> about the news media and how it's more about ratings and they will like it'll be twisted just enough mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to make you tune in. Yep. That's why the highest rating shows are news because it grasps a certain demographic right. that's over 50. Because they twist the story so much that it did it fits the their narrative. I'm not trying to be a dick. Their narrative, yeah, no. their narrative more than it would like if you were just to report it straight down the middle. Which I there is a great graphic out there that shows who reports it down the middle and who doesn't. Yeah. And if you want news that's not bias, I recommend. And I think BBC was on the list of. BBC, AP, and Reuters, and there was like two more. I don't think any of our our countries is really on there anymore, is there? Because like there used to AP be. AP is here. Is it? Yeah, the Associated Press. <clears throat> I, there's like if Fox News is on the right, like right. over here on the right, CNN's in the middle towards the left, right. and it's like MSNBC's way left. And I'm like, okay, that makes. Like for television news and, and the 24 hour news network, God bless Turner for that, Ted Turner, because I mean, that that's a hell of an idea. But it, I can't do it because I get sad. Yeah. Well, I don't, I, I, I don't watch the news. Um, I'll read it uh, so I can. I know. will watch things as they happen live. I will say that because like if a news story breaks, I'm going to watch it live. Yeah. Like if I get a text message or like an alert that like or something's trending crazily on Twitter, yeah. Like oh god, I need to turn on the television and right. Outside that, I'm not gonna go out of my way to watch the news. I tried to explain to Eli what the term yellow journalism meant, um, and he he thought it was fake news. Like I was like, oh. no, we're just not gonna use that. That that's not a real thing. It's fake news. <laughs> I was like, no, that's mm -mm." yeah, that's that's become a term. I'm like, that that's a made up thing. Uh, We won't we won't use that. So like, we're gonna do more serious shows because that's something I strive to. Other than there'll be some comedy in it, of course, because you can't seriously talk about news and not make fun of it. That's just you can't do it. But uh, in sports as well, because fucking Astros and (laughs) that story just. But there's there's gonna be some cool stuff coming. Podcasting, like this has become my favorite thing to do now. Like I don't know what that says, but I I actually enjoy this. This is a lot easier for me to do now than it ever has been. Writing has become a struggle. I think it'll shift around. Yeah, I'm having a lot of uh, writer's block, but um. Let's see here. The other next question is, and I don't know, this is, I don't think this is directed. I think this is directed at me, but like, you always seem happy when you're recording. How do you deal with mental health? I don't. (laughs) I think that's the best answer I can give. Um, How about you? Um, I mean, I, I am now, but. Yeah. So, you know, because we've, we've always both talked about this pretty openly. Um, so I have a diagnosis of generalized anxiety disorder and major depressive disorder. And so um, generalized anxiety disorder, unfortunately, that doesn't ever go away. Um, but the major depressive or- disorder, that's cyclic. Um, so right now that's under control. 
Um, but I have a wonderful primary care provider, and right now I don't need counseling. So right now I'm, I'm good. So things really sucked for the last three months for me. And to the point where no one heard from me for like two weeks almost. Like I would just send out one word or two word text, which you know is not me. Mm-hmm. I got off social media for a while because I don't know about anyone else. But that does not help. No, it doesn't. Like, I can't stand being on... Like, there are just days where everybody irritates me on social media. Like, everybody. It's like, fuck, I want to punch somebody in the throat. Like, I won't. Because I'm about as dangerous as flubber. but, But, like, it's just... Social media gets to me so much sometimes. And I was like, I got to step away. Yeah, I can say I don't enjoy being back. It's very annoying. <laughs> I mean, you and Jim's conversations are fun to read. Yeah, now. I enjoy Jim. <laughs> like, I mean, if you kind of, like, I wish I had just as, like, a small number of people on mine, and that's it. And I don't want to start another one because that I do it. have a small number now that I'm back, and that I still, I've already, like, unfollowed several people. Oh, I've done that. I only I have, like, 60 people. <laughs> I started unfollowing people. I'm like, I'm still going to be your friend on here, but I don't want you. I don't want to see your shit. Yeah, no. Um, I will say this. There's been a lack of posting lately because of this, because I got to the point. <sighs> I can't. I, I, fuck it. I got to the point where I was sitting on the floor crying, thinking about ending it in the last month. That's how bad things are. It is better now. I got help because I needed it. And I admitted it. For the first time maybe in my life, I admitted I needed help. Because I usually, I won't say it. Because I'm like, I was told that I, being brought up, like, you get that, the terrible stigma of depression where you can just pass it off. It's not anything that's, you know what I'm talking about, like. Like, if you do this and this and this, it'll go away. Mm -hmm. Like, if you work out, you eat better, you do this, it'll just magically poof. It's a a state of mind. That's horseshit. Make yourself happy. I mean, they're like, yeah, it'll make you (laughs) feel better a little bit. Yeah, no, thinking positive. Like, you try, and then it's just like, fuck it. And I got to the point where I was pretty much just over everything. And... Got help. Like I said last week, the pills make me feel high. I'm on Ambien to sleep, but that's all. That's part of that. But I never will forget that question from the doctor. Like, are you sleeping? No. How long have you not been sleeping? Forever? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, I, everyone who knows me knows I don't sleep. But, yeah. So, uh, I think right now my therapy has been this. Because I always feel... I know for a lot of people, like... I know it sounds weird, but like doing stuff like this and just knowing that I get like if one person hears the show and goes, I know how you feel. I'm good. Like having a good support system um, is really important. Um, And I think having friends that have been in similar situations is important because then there's there's less pressure to um, be happy. Right. um, When you. Or to force to have, like, to yeah. force yourself. Yeah, uh, I hate being out in a group of friends when I don't feel like being happy and um, having to pretend to be happy. Um, yeah. That's very that. unpleasant. Um, and I think we're really lucky to have a really good group of friends that um, are understanding because... Um, you know, I've been there. Katie's been there, um, but we're also um, we're also going to be the people that will call you in the middle of the night, uh, or Katie will call me and to check on you. <laughs> yeah, I remember you texting me that. Like, yeah, or no, you called and told me that. Yeah, um, you've called me more in the last week than I think you have in your entire life. By the way, <laughs> you you probably are the number one person I talk to you on the phone though. Uh, Because I don't like to talk on the phone. I love it. But see, I don't call anybody anymore. Yeah, I don't like talking on the phone. So if I look back at, well, uh, if I look back at my call history, it's probably you and Katie. 
Uh, you're probably the only two that I talk to on the phone. Um, but um, we typically text every single day. Um, and I think like what there was like two days you didn't text me. And I'm like, uh, what's wrong? Four. I don't think it got that long. I think it, I think it was close to four. I don't know that it got that far. But yeah, I know I didn't talk. I just didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't care. Like I wasn't eating. I don't. It got to the point where like I just did a show with Manda. And I was like, I just went through the motions and you can listen to the show. And like I tried to force it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. And I, I was sitting there and I'm like, I don't even want to go back in the office and post this. Like, I don't even want to do it. It's it's exhausting. Not because I don't love the show, but it's no, just but because it's exhausting. I was dead to the world. Yeah. And I'm feeling a lot, thank God, because, like, new medicine's helping. I have not felt that way. So I'm like, that's a plus. Mm-hmm. Moral victory. Uh, I'm not sad right now, which is, a, like, I mean, like, I don't feel depressed. There are, de- there are moments where I'm like, fuck. <laughs> but I think that's just life. Yeah. Like, had some stress this week, but like they're just days where like I feel now I'm taking more mental health breaks because I feel like I need it. Yeah. I did take it at probably the worst time. And I but like I couldn't help it. Like and I just stopped functioning. That's not an optional thing though, yeah. you know? Like when you so like that's something I think as a owner of a business now, I'm like, this has to be something I have to put in for people. Like even if, if we get to the point where we're big enough we're like Bam! There's your weekly which paycheck. Which is really sad that, unfortunately, um, places don't do that. And you, for the majority, are not thought of as a person. Um, yeah, because like people still have that terrible stigma on mental health for some reason. And I don't get it. Well, and it's even the same with physical illness. Like They don't want you there if you're sick, but you can still lose your job if you're sick. That's true. So take it a step farther with mental health. It's even worse. Um, but yeah. I was going to show you a post if I could find it, but now I probably can't find it. Uh, of course, now I can't find it. But yeah, no, like I, I just hate when people tell me you can get over it if you do this. You can get over it if you if you do this and this and this and these four steps and I was going to show you. I, um, so it's, it's been a long time since I've actually went to counseling. Uh, there's been some times in between where I really should have, but unfortunately I don't have good insurance coverage because that's just the story of America. But, um, during that time, like I, I saw a psychiatrist too, and he screened me to make sure I wasn't bipolar. And, um, he was like going through questions to see if I was manic. And I'm like, I don't think I've ever been manic in my life. Like that's just down, like always down. No high, just down. Like (laughs) if I'm, if I'm manic, it's probably because like, I'm like, like in that time pre or post migraine or fuck that time or like, I have just had a whole bunch of Skittles. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <a> sugar high. <laughs> like, I wish I could have some manic. <laughs> like, is that an option? Can I opt into manic <laughs> <laughs> so we can get some laundry done? But uh, yeah, no, just just there, down. <laughs> you know what the worst part about it, and, and I mean honestly, is when the chores take a hit because, like, I hate that shit. Like, yeah. I hate the fact. Like, I just look at my dishes. I'm like. No, yeah, well, it's like you cannot muster up a single bit of energy. Or In your head, your head's telling you it's you just need to do like, this. It's just like, hmm, no, like I cannot, I can't pull my cover back. I can't, I can't move. Yeah. You know? Like, okay, I so- think, so did you ever watch, did you ever get around to watching, um, um, Oh, I can't think of it. The show on HBO with uh, Zendaya. I have not yet. What's it called? What's it called though? Um, this is this is my starts job. with an E. I know which one you're talking about though. Why can't I think of it? Like I can see it in my head. It's because it's early in the morning. I'm waiting for a statement to that, but nothing. <laughs> it's because it's early. I uh, can see it in my head. Uh, Euphoria. Yes. So there's the scene in it because she's she's a manic depressant. 
Um, and she has a moment where she, where she's on a, a downslide and um, like she's basically like barricaded herself in a room and she's like um, watching like reality TV and she has to pee so bad, but she can't like bring herself to get out of bed. And she's just laying there for hours and hours and hours and she just cannot bring herself to move. I feel that. And sometimes. she ends up getting like such a terrible kidney infection um, and I'll, all I can think about is like, yeah, I get you. <laughs> like, I understand that. So mental health is a really difficult thing. Um, I think it depends on what's, what state of mind you're in at the moment and how that we've both dealt with it. Um, because, um, I, I think it depends on how dire it is because you have to actually have a, a grasp on um on it to realize that hey i need to i need to do something or you're just gonna lay there it's kind of what happened like i got to the point like we got back from houston and and i don't know if it was just like i was depressed before that like this is one of those situations that i've never experienced before where i go into something and i'm just looking hating the world and just don't want to be there but i was able to pick myself up for like two days (laughs) And then as soon as we were on our way home, like halfway home, like that just wore off. Yeah. Like I hit a wall again. I'm like, God. I think sometimes change of scenery helps. Yeah. Get you out of out of the place the same. where you're where you feel trapped. I feel that a lot. Mm-hmm. A lot. Not because I'm married, probably should stick that out there, no. but but just in general, like because I don't I'm not I'm not able to get out much. And it does suck sometimes. Like Yeah. Like that's one reason why we schedule some trips. Like, all right, there's a concert this weekend. Who is it? Nickelback. Well, fuck. Let's just go ahead and go. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it it is one of the like you need to. I know that I, I the doctor even like you need to get out of your house more. I was like, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I worked in family um practice, um, I'd have a lot of patients who would come in really discouraged. Um you know, struggling with depression or anxiety, um, particularly younger people. Um, not that older people did not, but it was the younger people that I would spend a lot more time with because um, a lot of times they felt very alone. And um, so I would spend a lot of time with them because if they f- felt that a medical professional had gone through the same thing, was going through the same thing, would eventually be back going through the same thing and um, would also reach out for help because sometimes picking up the phone call, making the appointment, showing up for the appointment, sometimes that's the hardest part. Yep. And um, having to tell someone that you need help is very, very hard. Um, And so I would sit a lot of times in the rooms with patients um, and I made a lot of really good connections with patients um, because of that. And I have no problem ever telling any of my patients that I was there um, in the same place as they were um, or that, you know, because at the time, I mean, my, the primary care provider that I worked for is the person who currently manages my medications um, and I think that helps them too, knowing that the person that they are seeing is a person that I trust to take care of me. Yeah, I, I actually broke down in the doctor's office because it's like I didn't expect yeah. that to happen. So it, like I said, I <clears throat> finally got help, which is the first like first time in a long time I've been like I know I need it. I feel it's weird now. Like it's just weird because I'm still getting adjusted and mm-hmm. I don't, it takes a while. Yeah, she said it would take three to four weeks before like. I was supposed to have an appointment on the third. Like, damn it. (laughs) But because we get back on the second. And it's really frustrating because sometimes the first medicine doesn't work and the second medicine doesn't work and the third medicine doesn't work. Yeah, you have to take like four or five. I got lucky, I think, because it is working. Yeah. I don't know if it will forever, but right now, like I am like, I don't feel it. I, I, I won't say which one since I talk about my kids a lot, but one of my kids takes medicines for anxiety as well. Um, and he had to have his medicine adjusted um, once, but his first medicine worked and he's been on it for several years now. I, I will say this. Hey, let's make uh, medicine cheaper. Fuck. Yeah. 
Uh, I think we need to talk about some happy shit now. Probably. But, uh, but whoever whoever asked, if, if you're struggling with this, you're not alone. And um, I Yeah, no, I, we, I don't think we've ever talked about that. Like, I know we have, but I don't think we've ever really Went into talked depth. about yeah. that. Uh, do you like hot dogs? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do not. If I didn't think you did. I didn't think you would eat a Chicago it, dog. I was just asking no. because Brody's like, do you, will you eat a Chicago dog? I'm like, I know I will. I don't know if anyone else On will. occasion, when we have hot dogs at home, like for chili dogs or whatever, I buy 100% turkey. Oh, but they're 100% beef, though, in Chicago. Does I don't make know it a little... I trust it. I would. Well, I mean, like... If I'm going to do a hot dog, if I'm going to do a hot dog, it's either a Portillo's or it's, which by the way, I can tell you now, like I'm excited about the convention. I'm excited about the extracurriculars. There is nothing more effing exciting about going for our food on this trip. Like I. It sounds like a lot of heartburn. Well, the milk cake or the chocolate cake shake. No, that just sounds good. Well, I, I always like shakes. Oh, that shake is so good. That shake is better than sex. I take it back. <laughs> I did leave my house once over the weekend, and that was to drive to Sonic to get a milkshake. What flavor? Because Jesse would not. Chocolate. No. Yeah. I mean... It's Sonic. They don't have any good, like, special flavors, and Dairy Queen <sighs> here is closed on Sundays. I didn't know that. Yes. F and hell. It's not worth going to Jonesboro for Dairy Queen. No, that's especially 20- when you're sick. That's a 20-minute drive. No. I wanted wings so bad the other night. Oh, before we get into this... I've had two of the most horrible fast food stories I have ever had this, like, last week. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. So, one night, Ashley is working at her other job, and the fire alarm was going off for, like, 12 hours straight. There? Yeah. So, she had a migraine, and she's like, I told her, I'm like, I'll make your day better. How about we order a pizza? Yay! And we ordered that new Pizza Hut pizza that has like the uh, mozzarella bites on it. Mm-hmm. It is the most disgusting piece of shit really? I've ever had. So we order it, and like on the commercial, it shows like the bites are on the crust. Yeah. No, they're on the pizza itself, and they're so damn soggy. It's like mm. eating a it's like eating a wet napkin. <laughs> it's it's like eating a wet napkin with some Italian seasoning. It's so it's bad. basically like. Stuffed crust, but it's like, mm, like pinched together. And you, you, do you like Sonic mozzarella sticks? Sometimes it depends on how they're like. If they end up being cooked okay, if they're real fresh. Yeah, these weren't. It was like if you take the the frozen mozzarella sticks from like the dollar from the Dollar Tree. Mm-hmm. It was like, hey, I wonder what this would be like on a frozen pizza. Pop, but you don't cook them enough. Yeah, and they're just soggy, and it was. The most disgusting piece of shit I have ever ordered in my life. It was like 16 bucks, too. And because my wife doesn't eat pork, we always have to end up with two pizzas. Because I don't like beef because I have this like weird thing about pizza beef and like the pizza places because it always is like somewhat minty to me. Like it tastes minty to me. That's weird. So one seasoning fucks with me. I just don't know what it is yet. And... <clears throat> I'm not the biggest pizza Hut fan. I like their sauce, but that, but yeah. So I'm just pissed at this pizza. Then we go to Wendy's one night because the wife wants chicken nugs. Not gonna just. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna get a spicy chicken. I take a bite of the chicken. It's just breading. That's weird. No chicken, just breading. Just fried breading. That's really weird. I'm so mad. I took a picture of it and called out Wendy's on Twitter, which is probably the most gutsy thing I've ever done in my life. And uh, I got a coupon. So, hey. And I will use that on some spicy nugs eventually. But damn, Pizza Hut refunded my money. Good. But I was like, that was the shittiest thing I've ever put in my mouth. And that says a lot because I've put some weird shit in my mouth. Don't email me. Please. We've ate some weird stuff on the show. Yeah, we, we can just. You should have just left it at that. Yeah, well, I'm going to. We ate. We drank glog. <sighs> Someone sent a message that when we ever start doing video for me to do a Carolina Reaper. I don't know what that is. But... It is the one of the world's hottest peppers. Oh no, thank you. And I said I will do it, but someone has to do it with me, and I think I know who I want to do it with me. So, <laughs> so video coming in the fall. Of who will be eating a Carolina Reaper with me at Riot Fest. That's all I'm saying. 
Unless I can get a celebrity to do it with me, and then I'm all about that. But yeah, no, food. So, like, my food experience lately has been shit. Has been shit. But this weekend, we're going to get good food. And I'm all excited for it. <laughs> like, I know Medieval Times food is always great. Like, there's never a bad Medieval Times experience. Like, Chicago's bigger, by the way, than Dallas is. Like, the venue itself is bigger. But, yeah, I'm pretty excited about the food. That's 90% of why I'm excited right now. But let's talk about C2E2. <laughs> this is your first time in Chicago, isn't it? It is. Oh, my God. We have to go to the Bean. Yes. My child is very determined that we go to the Bean. I wish it was to put a dildo on a Bean weekend because I, I totally do that. I told Zink about that. <laughs> the live stream of that video is so damn funny. It's ridiculous. Oh, my God. It's so funny. I do like C2E2's website, by the way. I'm nervous about the venue. I really got very comfortable with Kansas City. Um, Even though sometimes I would get lost by going down the wrong el- escalator, but... Oh, that's Kansas City's uh, convention center is so confusing. It's at like times. you go down and like run wrong, one wrong one. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't know where I'm at. Um, but I mean, I got really comfortable with it. And because um, we went, what, three years? Yeah, we've gone three years. So this is our first year not going. Uh, yeah. uh, because I'm a sad. Well, it was like I feel like three years is a good time and then take like a year break from yeah. it and then. Because we kind of do the same, like, I don't want to do the same convention every year and kind of get, we have to keep it fresh somehow for the readers. I know. And for me, because I'll get bored and I'm like, "Eh." it just was kind of starting to feel a little bit like home. That is home for me. I'm always feeling that way every time we go. Uh, We are not going to not go to Kansas City at some point this year, though, for something. So I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I have some, I have some thoughts, but Yeah, this weekend. Uh, see, so we're going to Chicago. Sharon's first time. I'm excited for you to try that shake. Like that, that's gonna be like that. Might be a video reaction. Like that's great. Because that's probably all my wife's eating. <laughs> you know how she is about sweets. <laughs> she is. Uh, and so, there's a lot of foods that she doesn't care for. Yeah, she loves so. that, and she loves that pla- Portillo's place. So I mean, like that kind of. She got a burger. It was bigger than her head. I'm like, all right, well. Yeah, good deal. Good deal. Uh, there's going to be a lot of experiences for the first time. One, our first convention in Chicago. This is one of the biggest cons in the world. I think it's probably number three now. Three or four. But, yeah, we're there's a lot of... Uh, let's see. I'm not going to talk about the wrestling stuff until later. Uh, of course, uh, George Takai is going to be there. I love him. Mm-hmm. Mark Ruffalo, who played the Incredible Hulk in the New Avengers. The entire group of Critical Role... Which is a uh, geek and oh, is that right? Is it a geek and century show? I have no idea. They play D and D. That's all they do. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Like they just game and play D and D. The cast of the boys. Um, two of the primary um, characters, actors. Mm-hmm. Uh, part of the Umbrella Academy. Mm-hmm. Two of the main actors in there too. Uh. Well, I want to say almost the entire cast of Ruby, but or half the cast of Ruby, which is one of the only few. I mean, it's an American anime. I enjoy that show. Uh, of course, comic creators, which there are so many. And I, I feel like going into a list of comic creators on a show would be here all day because I think it goes on for four pages. Yeah, it's really long. <clears throat> so if you like comic books this year, whew, there's some great artists, though. Oh, my goodness. I've seen some great photos of like artwork this year. And I'm like, all right. I normally don't go into a convention knowing I'm going to spend money. But I'm going into this convention knowing I'm probably going to spend some money. I don't. That makes me sad a little bit. But uh, My Hero Academia cast, which I know nothing of that show. Uh, Jesse's a big fan of it. So is Ashley. Like mm-hmm. she, she talked about going to the panel. But she's like, eh. Uh, there's some gaming guests, but I don't know what they're from. This site. I love this site, but it takes forever to load. Uh, Neil Adams is going to be there. I did see that dude. We will always be the squirrel cookie people to him. Remember that? Mm-hmm, we, were, mm-hmm. we were at Little yeah. Rock. Yeah. And Ashley handed him a squirrel cookie. And the next day, 
he yells at us and goes, hey, you guys are the squirrel cookies. Yeah. And we saw him at another convention. I think it was Kansas City. I think you weren't there yet. I think it was when Ashley and I went up there on a Friday early. And he recognized us as the squirrel cookie people. And even asked us if we had some then, too. And I'm like, let's bring them here. (laughs) Like, I knew Little Rock, we could get away with it. But not here. Uh, And then, of course, uh, Boofs. And I sent you the map. Mm -hmm. It's a large place. (sighs) That's intimidating for me. Yeah. Like I'm not sure. I I'm I am uh I'm pretty sure I'm getting lost. <laughs> there are a lot of big stuff. Like we have no idea what we're going into. Like we should most... add each other on find my phone so we could like <laughs> ding each other. Yeah, because one upside about me having an iPhone now is like we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Cause there's a lot of people gonna be there. And I know that this is different and being never being like us never go and we don't know what to expect. And we don't know how it's marked out that um, again, I hate to go back to Kansas City, but um, they had things pretty well um, marked. They have them on the ceiling. Do they? They have the banners. I watched someone walk around the floor. Good, good, good. (laughs) Um, Because um, navigation is important, especially when you lose a party member. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. Uh, David Yost from the Power Rangers. He is the former Blue Ranger. Uh, Ivy Doom Kitty, who's one of my favorite cosplayers, who's uh, she was a uh, one of the heroes of cosplay judges on Sci-Fi. So, or one of the judges on that show and was part of Heroes of Cosplay. I don't. There was a reality show that she was on on Sci-Fi, uh, and then so let's let's talk about the elephant in the room because one of the perks that I got for this is like because we've been there for wrestling and. Mm-hmm. They were like, do you want to cover the pay-per-view? And I'm like, oh, God, yes. <laughs> Not knowing, because we thought, oh, because I think at the time, I didn't know your husband wasn't going. <laughs> and I was like, is uh, Jesse, I think I texted you and like, is Jesse going? And then when you said no, like, would you want to go? And you were like, I'm up for whatever. And I go, this should be entertaining as fuck. So we're taking you to a pay-per-view. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> there will be pyro. There is a live band playing someone to the ring who's a rock band. Okay. Uh, well, no, I don't know. Like, I know we took you to see famous dick wrestler Joey Ryan. <laughs> That's a story. I know we talked about that on live before and that photo is still floating out there, which I think is still on my Facebook or on our on our website Facebook page. If you want to see a picture of what a reaction is of normal people seeing somebody get flipped by a dick confusion (laughs) but we are going to be uh she's going to see all elite wrestling and they've got a huge panel and a huge like meet and greet all weekend long and i'm actually going to do one of the meet and greets on sunday and uh yeah no they've got i told you they have a trans wrestler Mm -hmm. she is now the women's champion and every time someone i see a trans phone about twitter i block them fucking asshole i'm done like i'm like i don't give a shit i don't want you being a fan of mine block yeah like fuck people uh so they're doing a huge show at the wind trust so that should be which is just a block away from where we are by the way that's awesome so not a lot of walking uh yeah i don't know what to expect i really don't i i think this weekend's gonna be insane is what i think probably I think it's going to be a lot of walking. I think this is Dallas. I think this is going to be like our first year, your first year at Dallas. I don't get overwhelmed at conventions, and even I'm worried about getting overwhelmed. I don't think Dallas walking was bad. That that one year was pretty rough. I don't think it was that bad. The year where we couldn't move? That was, uh, well, that was not much walking. <laughs> no, no, no. no, but I think it's going to be like that. Like I think That if- was more like the need to like physically fat off people. There was it was because they announced they had like some sort of conflict of interest. <clears throat> they in, had the Walking Dead, and they had to leave. Like they could only do. They a were day. scheduled to be there for what, like three days, but they were also scheduled to be there at the Talking Dead, Dead the same and, day yeah, on Sunday, and so they had to cancel. Like, oh my gosh, it was terrible. And they put all of them on one day, and you're just kind of just, oh my god, like we wouldn't. You'd move, and you just 
yeah. move and you'd hit somebody. Well, it's like you tried to step into a booth to look at something and then you were just stuck there for the next like two hours because you couldn't get back out into Got the stream. Got to know stream. a lot of booth vendors that day, <laughs> yeah. though. Like, that was cool. Nobody could get in or out of the booths. It was, it was bad. I'm excited for artwork because there's a lot of new artists we've never seen. I think that's something that... The one good thing about going to different conventions is we're going to see new stuff. And yeah. that makes me happy because I hate going to the conventions and knowing exactly where mm-hmm. everyone's going to be. Right. Kansas City's not like that. Thank the Lord. Dallas is not like that. Thank the Lord. But like the smaller conventions, which is one reason we've quit covering smaller cons is because they're always the same, mm-hmm. at least in our area. They may not be everywhere else, but. And we may do a couple of those here in the next couple of years. <clears throat> yeah, but... we might go back. Yeah. But like that one year, that but like every convention that you can even tell where the booth's gonna be. Like, hey, I know where that booth is. I know where that booth's gonna be. Right. That becomes very boring, and and it's always and, and don't take this personally for the cosplayers because I love cosplayer costumes, but a lot of them do the same costume around. Right. Like when there's smaller cons, you can get away with that. Can't do that at the big cons. You have to do different costumes, and I learned that the hard way during Kansas City. <laughs> Because that one couple that did the... St- did you see the stilts couple? I don't think so. There was a dude walking around his death on Friday, but he was in stilts. And he was like, I can't do this costume again now. Because he he showed it off. And Friday at cons doesn't have big crowds usually. Yeah. Sundays at conventions don't have big crowds usually. Saturdays do. Right. So, but they came back the next day with something else. But yeah, like I'm excited to see cosplay in Chicago. I'm I'm ready to see the Chicago the best convention for cosplay. I know Brody took a ton of photos last year. The powdered toast man is still my favorite one. (laughs) But like I don't, we don't know what to expect there. Right. I'm excited. I'm effing nervous because I have never done this big of a convention. I don't know if you feel the same way, but I don't know what to expect. So I just know it's big. Yeah. <laughs> like the map is intimidating to me, but that is, that will be, we will have a bunch of stuff coming next week. Cosplay photos, articles, uh, of course, probably an episode of live where we find out our reactions and was going to record it in Chicago. And then everything just kind of went blah. And I was like, well, we'll wait till we get home. <laughs> this like i said this week's been insanely crazy of stuff so i'm ready though first con of the year first con in over a year yeah it'll be nice uh and then i know we are covering fan expo this year you won't be there but uh ashley and i are going and we're taking her mother to see the scream cast because she's the biggest scream fan i know I mean, out of all the movies in the world, why the fuck not? And she wants to meet Matthew Lillard. Okay. Who I can't see as anyone else but Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. I don't know about you, but I like that guy. He follows us on Twitter. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then after that, we're going to be doing some concerts. Uh, I know there's some big ones coming up. I know we're doing... I know we're doing Riot Fest in the fall. <sighs> Just because somebody wants to see My Chemical Romance. I don't... I don't know. I know we're going to Goo Goo Dolls. So I'm pretty... Dilla. Yeah, I'm pretty excited mm-hmm. about this. Goo Goo Dolls, I don't remember who's opening for Life, Life House. Which I'm not excited about at all. I like Life House. So does everyone else. I just... Mm-hmm. Well, I like the earlier stuff. I don't know about the, the later stuff. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on this year we're trying to do and new stuff and trying to keep things fresh. And it's the 10 year anniversary of the web. I can't believe that. I haven't talked about that yet, have I? I don't think you have on on a podcast. Uh, This is the 10th year. And holy crap. I don't I don't know how to feel about that. Like, I just I don't know what to say. I can't believe this. I sent you a photo of something that I'm thinking about doing, and I was like, yes or no, and you were like, neutral. God damn it, Sharon. (laughs) (laughs) 
so there's a reason for that photo, but that's like the it's a more colorful layout of what it was originally. And I was like, I think that would be kind of cool to do this year just for the year. And I don't know. I was thinking about like it's kind of a weird I can't believe I've been doing this for 10 fucking years thing. <laughs> but yeah. And I mean, you've now been part of it for four. four. Mm-hmm. I almost said five. <laughs> you know, four since 2016. Yeah, because... See, going with you to conventions is fun. Well, thank you. Because we never know what to expect with you. We also didn't know if you were having fun that first year. <laughs> because we were... Okay, so we're not around you for like half of that trip. Like that first day, right? Like... Because we were in Dallas, you and Ashley's mom were just, you guys went off. Mm-hmm. And Ashley and I were like, well, we'll go off too. We'll see what we can find. And like, but like we found you sporadically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it was just randomly like, oh, because we made sure to make Ashley's mom wear the most colorful fucking outfit we could find <laughs> because we could find you easier. <laughs> Still should have someone get a tattoo on the floor. Uh, there's an arcade at C2E2, 750 machines. Which sounds like a lot until you consider how many people are going to be there. Yeah, it's... It, I, I'm i hoping to play Galaga once this yeah. weekend. Okay, well, you fought your way in there. I, for Galaga, I might shake somebody. And then you get to play one round and people will kick you out. And I get the high score and I'm done. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that would be pretty awesome. I'm we need to lie. find a draft cade. There are two of them, like something like it, and there's one by our hotel. Well, there you go. I've been doing a lot of research about that. Where. Sounds better. I've been doing a lot of research because we're over by medieval times too. Because I'm like, I don't want downtown Chicago hotels. What the hell's up with the deposits? Why? Why do I need to put a deposit down on a room and then pay for the room when I get there? What the fuck is that shit? <laughs> like that's insane to me. Like, I mean, I'm cool with paying with a room for a room up front. That doesn't bother right. me. But paying a deposit, then paying for the room when I get there, and then getting the deposit back like three weeks later is stupid. That's, yeah. Like, I, I get doing the incidental. That's fine. I get that. I understand that every hotel is going to do that. Like, I mean, at least we have a hotel this time that has breakfast. Ours in Houston didn't. But, but like... <laughs> But it did have a Starbucks in it, so yeah. so at least I got we got good coffee, because because you know some of that hotel coffee sucks. Yeah, that's why Jesse has like a little Keurig. We have one too now, and we thought it, we we're gonna bring it. I just I gotta remember to buy some pods tonight, so we can have those. Because yeah, no, like I don't know. It's I don't even know where I was going with this, but yeah, I I really have no idea where I was going with this. Now I lost my train of thought. Um, deposits. Oh, yeah, no. Fuck the deposits on hotels. It's dumb. It's dumb. So we decided to say 20 minutes away. Now we're like by medieval times, and it's like within like a two-minute drive to our hotel. And a block from um, the wrestling event. Right? Is that what Not you said? our hotel. The convention. Oh, the block. convention. Yeah. So we're at the convention all day. Yeah. So that Saturday's going to be a long day there. But I'm, I'm pretty excited for this one. I do wish things would have been different, but six and one, life is life. Brody's there. We're gonna meet. I'm gonna meet Brody for the first time. We're probably gonna get it on in a bathroom. Okay. This you want to stand outside the door? <laughs> I want someone to be like, <laughs> "All right, we're just gonna hear the noises." Yes, yes. He'll kill me. Uh, <laughs> he was supposed to be doing the show with us, by the way, and he could not make it today. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's why I went. Brody can help with the C2E2 preview. Brody can't do the show. Fuck. Because <laughs> I was like, you and Brody on the same show would be interesting. And I was kind of excited about that idea. Because you two have never met. And he, like, we got to get you two on our show eventually. But I think that's going to wrap up this edition of Live, everybody. Is there anything you would like to add? Mm, I don't guess so. <laughs> It's. <laughs> I don't know what to expect going into this I got the this fucking one. giggles from the way you said that. 
I don't know what to expect going into this. So. I mean, we'll have a lot I to mean, talk about yeah, afterwards. Yeah. I'm I'm excited to see your Okay, so four I told you four things. I'm excited to see your reaction to the food because if you don't like Portillos, we're gonna have a long discussion. Number two <laughs> Number two, it's always great to when look, food is ninety percent of the reason I have trips. Uh Medieval Times is always a hoot. We'll probably all have a drink. Life will be good. Uh, one, a wrestling show. Like, three, one. Three, a wrestling show for me, which is exciting. But actually taking my two favorite, two of my favorite people in the world to go with us is like, I'm excited for, even though I know you have no idea what the fuck is happening. Yeah, none. <laughs> I could try to explain it to you, but we are in a car for like six hours, so that works. Uh... And I'm going to take over the whole back seat. I hope you're prepared. I don't give a Bring shit. Bring in a blanket. We have a blanket in the back seat. I've, I've got a... It's it's Ravenclaw blue. Fuck Ravenclaw you. blue. Fuck you. Have a backpack with snacks. I'm excited to get some car stickers. Oh, yeah. You'll need to fix your car. Yeah, we don't have any stickers. Like, yeah. it's hard for us to find our some car decals. now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's hard for us to find the car now because, like, we had all those awesome stickers on the one car and mm-hmm. then the deer fucked everything up. Yeah. And now they're like... Do I bring games, or is our trip too short for games now? You can still bring games. By the way, the creators of Cards Against Humanity are there. Cool. cool. They have a whole table, a whole booth, and they have a new game. Don't know what it is, but they have a new game. Hmm. There's a lot of board games going to be there. So that that's something. I do we- like them. Like in general, anytime they put out any statement. Yeah, that's something we've never seen. We've never seen them at a convention. We've never seen board... Like, there are a few here and there, but we've never seen board game booths. Yeah. Well, we've met the uh, Tea Turtle people, and they they had a game, game because we bought it. But, like... The Unstable Unicorns, because the boys and I play that. That's fun. But, like, outside maybe, what, two or three, maybe the entire run of our conventions? Yeah. We've never been to a... I think this is going to be... We've seen some games that don't really like work <laughs> like we're like sounds cool but meh. i need to get a 30 side die, or 20 sided die i don't have any we need to do we need to make that D thing happen yeah we just got to have everybody to play that's the problem right now like you know i'm always available <laughs> but like outside me <laughs> and you that's it like the boys really want to play okay well then we got four yeah that's probably enough yeah, the boys really want to play. Jesse won't play with us. I won't. Ju- he says it'll take too long. I mean, it could. I'm like, we'll just set it up someplace and come back to it later. Yeah, no, that's. I mean, we have the desk yeah. over there, and he he's like, no, I don't really want to. But he can sit at a computer all day on a Saturday and play Warcraft. Throw that shade. Throw it. He's like, no, I get up and walk around some. I'm like, Ugh, drop that tea. Like. Do I have to be the t- stereotypical D and D player? Like, do I have to have some Doritos and like a fucking Mountain Dew and just chug it out of the bottle? Do you like Mountain Dew? It's the oh, since this whole medicine thing. Guess what does not taste good to me? You don't anymore? like Pepsi? No, that's sad. I took I, I took a picture, like I had some when I started it, and I'm like, oh, this tastes fine. And I I drank one, and it just tasted flat and nasty to me and now every like and it's been that way every time i was like maybe it was just that pepsi because that can happen Mm -hmm. but it's been every pepsi i've had and i'm Mm -hmm. like the only soda i can taste now is mountain dew and i'm like this is fucked up but guess what i'm not doing a lot of now not drinking soda i have a mountain dew bottle just in case i want it like a snack like if i eat potato chips or something like i or popcorn like i want a soda for that it's the only time i drink soda now well, that's good, I guess. So I was getting somewhat healthy. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to try to drink a Pepsi this weekend. But I haven't drank since I've been on this medicine either. This weekend should be fun. Because <laughs> I'm down in like a 32 ounce of beer. Okay. Well, I guess I guess we'll see what happens. Everybody, if, you, uh, if I get arrested, there'll be a GoFundMe to bail me. Because no one will be able to. Uh, all right, everybody. That's going to wrap up this show. C2E2 this weekend. If you're going, I hope you enjoy it. We will have the entire recap in written and audio form next week. I don't know what all is going to happen. Pr- 
probably by the end of it, we're all going to hate each other. <laughs> We've never not likely. This. It's college. Not likely. <laughs> it's, we're sharing a living room. Um, so that'll be an interesting experience. So uh, everybody, until next week, for Sharon. Bye, everyone. We will hear. We'll. I guess we'll see you, but you'll hear us. So your ear holes. Download us. Uh, if you do download us on Apple or anywhere you listen to our podcast, uh, leave us a comment. Throw us the five stars. Do whatever you want to do. Into your life. All right. We'll see you next time, everybody. And we're going to do the show like we do every other show with Torgo. You know what to do, sir. Take us home tonight. You cannot stay. The master would not uh, approve. Uh, <laughs>